Hello again and welcome to another installment of Garage Science. This time, I'll be showing you how to make a simple yet effective nickel plating solution with only a handful of ingredients. Here's what you're going to need. Distilled water, a mason jar, boric acid, nickel sulfate, nickel chloride, some measuring cups, maybe some measuring spoons, not really an aquarium pump, but I'll explain that later, a postal scale if you have one, and a little bit of nickel metal. Let's get started. We're making a nickel plating solution for what's called a Watts plating bath. Take your mason jar and a measuring cup and add 24 ounces of distilled water. The reason you want to use distilled water is to minimize the mineral impurities present in tap water and spring water. Next, zero out your scale with an empty measuring cup and begin measuring the different chemicals. This solution calls for 1.1 grams per ounce of boric acid, so I added about 26 grams. From one of my previous videos on making nickel sulfate, I was able to produce a little over 300 grams of it. I made this from a simple chemical reaction with solid nickel and was able to grow relatively large crystals of nickel sulfate. If you want to watch this video, you can find it in the video description. You can also purchase nickel sulfate from the links I've provided in the video description if you don't want to make it yourself. I used 192 grams to achieve a concentration of about 8 grams per ounce. Next, I measured out 42 grams of nickel chloride to get a concentration of about 1.7 grams per ounce. By adding nickel chloride, you increase the nickel content and the chlorides help break down the nickel anode. Before adding the chemicals into your mason jar, you're going to want to heat it in the microwave for about 4 minutes to get it nice and hot, which will help dissolve the nickel sulfate much quicker. First, add the nickel sulfate and stir until all the crystals have dissolved. Next, add the nickel chloride and stir until fully dissolved. This shouldn't take that long. Finally, add the boric acid. Be careful since it has a consistency similar to talc powder, it can poof up and make a mess. It will also float a little, so gentle stirring will be required. Once the solution is cooled, you can use it to rinse the measuring cups and recover the last little bits of chemicals that stuck to the sides. Just pour a little in each cup and rotate the cup before pouring back into the mason jar. Alright, so now to get into actually using the solution. For starters, I thought initially that using an aquarium pump would be good since it works well for copper plating. But after using one in this plating bath, I could never get a good plating result. The concept of using an air sparge like this is to provide agitation in the solution to strip off any gases that form on the surface of the part and keep the chemicals well mixed. This works well for copper plating, but when used in nickel plating solution, it gave me very black deposits that were extremely brittle or just wiped off. There are several sources out there that describe using air sparges, so I don't know why this was occurring. Let me know what you think about this in the comments and if you have any ideas on how to fix it. Anyways, after messing around with it for an afternoon, I decided to scrap the idea of using the air pump. To start plating, you need to make a nickel anode. I used pure nickel strips that typically get used to make rechargeable battery packs. You can find a link to the nickel I purchased in the video description. Don't use too much nickel since you don't want to have an excessive surface area, which could lead to increasing the nickel concentration in your plating bath. Having a surface area of about 1 to 1.5 times the surface area of your part should work just fine. Next, create a simple wire mount for whatever it is that you're attempting to plate. I'll be using pennies to test my plating bath out. While plating, you will notice gas bubbles forming on your anode and cathodes. This is chlorine and hydrogen gas respectively. 
The hydrogen gas will be much more visible and if inhaled can cause an almost burning sensation in your lungs. So have some common sense and use this plating bath in a well ventilated area. Now I was a little stupid when I started plating because I was careless and didn't pay attention to how I plugged my leads into the power supply. This resulted in attempting to plate nickel strip with copper from the penny. Besides not being the plating result I wanted, I also dissolved a bunch of metallic contaminants into my plating bath. So don't be like me and pay attention to what you're doing. Positive goes with your nickel electrode, which is your anode, and negative goes with your part, which is the cathode. The nickel strip was basically unusable at this point because it was covered in plated copper and a thick black sludge. I didn't want to risk further contaminating my bath, so I just made another nickel electrode. Next is the other major hurdle I had to overcome, which was figuring out what voltage to plate at. Typically for copper plating, slower is more conservative and most of the time will give you a better, shinier, and smoother finish. I tried this approach initially with the nickel plating bath and used about 0.8 to 1.5 volts and could never really get a shiny or smooth finish and most of the time the penny would be mostly or completely black. I got fed up and cranked the voltage up to about 3 volts and discovered the plating actually got better the more voltage I used. So I tried multiple voltages up to 12 volts. I did find that at high voltages, the nickel plating was more prone to delaminating and flaking, which you can see especially on the penny I plated at 7.5 volts. Ultimately, the best voltages I found to plate at were between 3 to 5 volts, so a few AA batteries or cell phone charger would actually work pretty well for this. And since the plating is much quicker at a higher voltage, it only takes a minute or two to get a nice full coat of nickel. You can easily provide a little mechanical agitation while the part is plating to make sure there is an even coat. So, besides the decorative bright nickel coating you can get, there are some practical engineering reasons to plate something in nickel. For example, nickel can be used as a pre-coating for copper plating. Since iron experiences an exchange reaction almost instantly with copper sulfate, an intermediate coating is necessary to prevent a non-adherent coating of copper from forming on an iron surface. This can be done by first coating an iron part in nickel and then plating it in copper. The nickel acts as a barrier and prevents the exchange reaction from occurring. If you'd like to learn more about this reaction, you can watch my other video provided in the video description. All in all, I was very pleased with this experiment. It is well within any hobbyist or professional to reproduce. I certainly had more success at this attempt than any of my previous attempts. The nickel coating I was able to achieve was bright, ductile, and evenly coated. Alright, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to subscribe and like this video. And remember to let me know what you think in the comments, whether it's positive or negative, I want to know. And make sure you look at my other videos on electroplating and share on social media. I enjoyed making this video, and as always, thanks for watching.